Dear friends, may God bless all of you, all of you, and may the Holy Spirit pour out His blessings upon your life. And the greatest blessing, the greatest blessing that the Holy Spirit gives us is not physical health, is not a healthy love life, it's not our daily bread. No. The greatest blessing, the blessing of the blessings, is when He, through His Word, in Spirit, penetrates us, when He enters us, when He makes His dwelling place inside of us, when He uses our intelligence, our ability to reason in order to reveal and make us understand His will for our lives. Well, this is the greatest blessing. It's the greatest wealth that a, a person can have. It's the Holy Spirit. There is no greatest wealth than this. Nothing from this world, nothing from this world is eternal. But those who have the Holy Spirit within them, well, these will remain forever, for all eternity. And that's what we've been trying to pass on to people. Every single day, we are here speaking of God's wonders, of God's words. Jesus once said, My words are spirit and they are life. Spirit meaning intelligence, wisdom, discernment, knowledge, and life. It's a life that a person has when they hear the Word of God. When God speaks, things happen. But it happens, for example, in the case of us human beings, it happens in our lives when we hear, we pay attention, we are attentive to His Word, and we then put them into practice. This is the greatest blessing, the greatest wealth that a person can have in their life. You who are watching me right now, or perhaps you are going to watch later on, think well about these, dear friends. God has given us reason, intelligence, the ability to think in order for us to be able to make the best choices. The soul, the heart, the breath of life, the spirit, or rather the living soul, the living soul, which is the heart, wants to feel, it only wants to feel. The soul feels, it tastes, it helps us taste food, it helps us to enjoy food. And this is God who does it, He created it. The soul makes us have ears to hear a beautiful song, a beautiful message, a beautiful word. The heart gives us this sensibility. The soul as well, through our eyes, are able to contemplate. The eyes can contemplate God's greatness. The sunrise, the sunset, nature, the sea, everything that God has created. And 
it's also the soul, the soul that God has given us, that gives us the ability to smell the perfume of the flowers, of good food when it's being prepared. The soul is this being that feels, it feels pleasure, it rejoices, it has joy, happiness, but also sadness, anguish, loneliness, it feels rejected, it feels hungry, thirsty. The soul is this being that is there inside of you that hears these words with your ears. You see our image with your eyes. It enjoys the word of God with spiritual feelings. But the one who decides to make this soul live eternally or not, to live eternally with God or not, it depends on our mind, our intelligence, our reason. God has given intelligence to everyone, good and evil, righteous and wicked. Everyone, everyone has the ability to think, to reason, and then decide what they want to choose. They can choose what they want. That's not how it was in the beginning. In the beginning, mankind didn't have, Adam and Eve didn't have an option. The only option they had was to do good, to hear and obey the word of God. They didn't know what evil was. They didn't know what sin was. They didn't know what death was. They didn't know what suffering and pain was. Because there was only good. Everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. Everything. God planted a garden full of flowers, beautiful, with a wonderful smell. All oh, this is yours, Adam. Enjoy it. Have the privilege to enjoy from the best of this land. But this tree here, this fruit here, you cannot touch because the day that you do it, you are going to die. Don't do it. That's all. However, curiosity, Eve's curiosity, and also passing it on to Adam, made them fall and disobey the word of God. See, for example, just for you to, to think, please. I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to be, you know, repeating myself and tiring anybody, but pay attention. You know that God called Abraham, and Abraham throughout his entire life lived in tents in the desert. Abraham would go back and forth, to south, east, north, west, always dwelling in tents. His nephew, when he had the opportunity to know Sodom and his wife fell in love with Sodom, and then what happened? They decided to leave Abraham. Abraham wanted them to stay with him. However, Lot said, no, I, I want to, to go my wife wants to stay there, to live there. There are houses there, there are things, you know, there you don't have to be building tents, we live in a house and so on. So, 
Lot followed the way of the city. And the same happens today. When you go to a shopping center, it's the town, it's the city, you go into a shopping center, you find everything there. So much light and, and shine and uh, offers. Then you go in there, and what will you do there? Oh, I just want to see fashion. Okay, you are going to go see it. So when you look at those things, if you liked an item of clothing or shoes or any item, then you see it and you, you like it, then your soul is stirred up your desire to have that. To have what you you are seeing. Okay, I want it. I want it. But you didn't even ask yourself, do I need that? This purse, this pair of shoes, do I need them? No, I don't. Oh, but it looks good on me. The question is, do you need it? No, you don't. But still you contradict your reasoning, your intelligence, because even though you don't need those things, you lust after them, and you buy them, and many times you get in debt, you use your credit card, and later on you are desperate, blaming God because your life is miserable, useless, and so on and so forth. Abraham lived in tents, in the desert, in the desert, there was nothing attractive like in the cities. In the desert, at night, there is a starry sky, beautiful. The sunrise, the sunset, everything is very peaceful in the desert. The soul is not easily influenced by what the city or the world offers. So, this is the line of thought concerning God. This is it. He offers His word, His voice. His word apparently feels like the desert. You only see letters and words and more words. But these words... They give life, they are spirit and life. They strengthen your spirit and give to your spirit the conditions to control your appetites, your desires, our desires, our lusts. Therefore, dear friends, I don't know if you are understanding what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to say is that there's a war that you have to wage, that we all wage between our intelligence, our reasoning, our rational being, our head, the spirit, and the heart, which is the soul. Which one will you listen to? If you place your mind on the word of God, then you will dream God's dream. You will see God's will being done in you. If you act based on your heart and you think the, this, this story is very beautiful, the Bible has very beautiful stories and you fall in love with the beautiful stories of the Bible, but you don't follow its advices, then you will have an emotional faith, a faith from the heart, a faith that is pure emotions, and it depends on listening to a, a song, to a, a gospel song, so you can be strengthened. When you base your faith on songs and musics and emotion, then your faith is just religious fanaticism. It's a faith 
that will turn you into a defeated Christian, a faith that will turn you into a Christian that is always disappointed, frustrated, because you are going to see the promises of God, but you won't have strength to take possession of them. You won't have power to take possession of them because you lack the spirit. You only have feelings, heart. That's the reality, emotions. So you see celebrities, excuse me, please. You are seeing many people, influencers, celebrities, singers, football players, successful people, famous people. All of a sudden, the person dies. Oh, why did they die? Oh, you don't say why they died. They don't, they don't say the cause of death. Sometimes the person just committed suicide, was just an overdose because they were with their spirit totally surrendered. Their soul would live out of feelings. Drugs, for example. What is an addiction? An addiction is to satisfy the soul. It's giving to the soul what, what it's asking. It's giving, 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 and it's never satisfied because it never submits to reasoning and, and intelligence. So, when we spoke about the message yesterday to the Christians who are defeated or disappointed or frustrated, we were trying to pass on to people that Jesus healed the sick, he delivered the oppressed, he did this and that. But everything Jesus did in the life of those people was only in those days, in that moment, for a certain period of time. But what Jesus worked the most for was not for healing and wonders, but it was to teach the Word of God. And that's why he said, my words are spirit and life. Spirit and life. So, you who want to have life with quality, a life free of inferiority complexes, a life where you are not going to be comparing yourself with somebody else's life, what so-and-so has or, or doesn't have. No, you don't. You, you look after yourself. You take care of yourself. If you want to have life with quality, then, dear friends, prioritize the spirit and life, which is the Word of God. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And then he said, you shall know the truth, which is the word of God, and the truth shall make you free. I was set free by the truth. I was made free by the truth. It wasn't the world that brought me up. No, my mother and father brought me into the world. But when I got to know the word of God, the Holy Scriptures, when I had access to the Holy Scriptures, then I dived my head, my mind, into these words. And today, after 60 years, I can tell you this. I can tell you about complexes because I had many complexes. Especially, you, you have to agree with me, I was young and I had a, a defect in my hands and I had everything to be frustrated, but still I wasn't. In, in my relationships, in dating, no. Why? Because what would make me feel down was due to the fact that I didn't know the Word of God. When I got 
to know the word of God. My mindset changed. My complexes, you know, of that inferiority complexes, they ended. Everything changed in my life. It's not that I didn't face problems. No, I faced many problems, and you know about many of them. <coughs> However, God has given us victory. He gave me victory. Problems, struggles we face, but praise God for them because I've learned from the struggles. I didn't learn, I didn't develop in my faith only by reading the Word of God. I developed in my faith experiencing the struggles and challenges and problems that we faced in this life. Obviously, that when I faced them, I had the Word of God that was my support. The Word of God was inside of me, which is the Holy Spirit. Then I was able to make the right decisions in the most difficult moments of my life because I applied what is written in my personal life. Unfortunately, people don't think like this. People think of taking possessions and conquering money, conquering this and that and the other. People are seeking the things of this world, the kingdom of this world. Jesus came and said, seek first the kingdom of God. And to seek first the kingdom of God is to seek the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Word of God, to reign in our mind and lead us according to His will. That's the reality. When the Apostle Paul teaches, or rather, when the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul teaches, saying, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. And there are so many pitiable people inside of the church. You have no idea. Because most people just want the blessings. They focus their life, their future, everything. They are just looking at the achievements, the material conquests and success. Why? Because they are looking at others. They are looking at those who are also succeeding and only God knows how. Oh, so and so bought this. Oh, I also want that. Meaning that they look at the shopping center of the world, the shopping center of the world, and they are leaving heavens aside. Instead of having heavens as, as their roof, as their dwelling place, when a person thinks, when they reason, when they think of the Word of God, they, they meditate on it, then they think as God thinks. And if they think as God does, then they are showing that they have a solid faith, a faith that is tangible, that will sustain them. This is how the first Christians were, not even death. Not even death or fire or the lions in the arenas or persecutions and injustices and defamation. None of these things. Nothing removed this faith from within them. Why? Because it was the spirit and the life of God in them. Dear friends, this is the best that God has given me. What God has given me, we are trying to, to give to you 100%, everything. 
I want you to have at least, I want you to have at least what God has given me, at least that. Do you understand this? In other words, I want you to have much, much more than what God has given me. And that makes me happy. If this happens, praise God. And that's what I want you to have. But it's pointless for me to just want it. Oh, God bless you. No, I, I'm, I'm trying to pass on to you what happens to me. The struggles, the difficulties are nothing. Absolutely nothing when you have the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the sign of your covenant, your marriage, your pact with Him, with God. Just as I carry the wedding ring for 52 years now, I have it in my finger as a sign that I am committed to my wife. I have a commitment with Esther and vice versa. When I received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the sign of God inside of me. The sign that we have a covenant, we are married. And because of that, because of this faith, then whatever struggles may come, we are ready, ready to, to face. Why? Because I know that God is with me and I want you to also be this way. That you may have a covenant with God in a way that in the face of struggles and disappointments, there will be good moments for sure, but there will be problems. There will be days, moments that you will feel down, but if you have this conviction within your mind, you are going to stand strong, you are going to overcome, you will get over it, and you are going to overcome. <laughs> These are the ones to whom Jesus said, to him who overcomes, I will give him the right to sit with me on my throne. Praise God. Oh, my Father, may the Holy Spirit enlighten these people. May God bless you today, today at all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. We are going to be teaching how to put on the whole armor of God, how you can put on this armor. Go there for you to learn how to put your intelligent faith into practice. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God.